Fluids, Bernoulli's equation problem. And our question to ponder, how is Bernoulli's equation used? We saw in the last video that Bernoulli's equation pertains to fluids at two different levels when they're in motion, when the uh, fluid is, is flowing. And this is our equation for Bernoulli's, or this is Bernoulli's equation. And we can see with Bernoulli's equation, it really it was derived from conservation of energy. And uh, it's kind of like conservation of pressure. So let's go and see how we can use Bernoulli's equation in a problem. So this is a typical problem you'll see with Bernoulli's calcula uh, calculations. Um, we have a large bucket here, water, and uh, a hole has been punched in it down here. And typically this hole is much, much smaller than this uh, cross-sectional area here uh, in these type of problems. Um, and the hole uh, is 0.3 meters below the uh, water level right here. <clears throat> when water shoots out, how far, so water's going to shoot out here horizontally, and it's going to land right over here. So how far away will the water hit the table that is 0.1? So this is 0.1 meters below the hole here. Um, so go ahead and pause the video and see if you can use Bernoulli's equation to help you uh, solve for this. Uh, if you get a little bit frustrated, you can always come back and, and look at the solution. But give it a, give it a try first. So uh, our goal in this problem was to find out how far this stream of water would land relative to this bucket of water if we pierced a small uh, hole in this opening right here. Well, in order to calculate that, hopefully you recognize that this is a projectile problem. And uh, being a projectile problem here, if you're going to find the horizontal distance, hopefully you also recognized that the horizontal speed that this comes out is going to remain constant the whole way. And uh, we would simply use a distance equation for constant speed, uh, V2 down here. So distance is equal to rate times time or speed times time. And we'll be able to calculate that once we find out what that uh, initial speed of this water stream is coming out of here. We also need to know how long it takes for that water stream to hit the ground. So that's kind of like a free fall problem uh, that we had before, or for horizontal uh, projectiles, uh, the distance that it takes, or the time it takes to fall is based on the accelerated motion uh, vertically. So we go back to our y is equal to 1 half gt squared plus vy initial, but that's equal to zero times time. And then the uh, initial, uh, position we're going to consider zero too. So starting from our distance equation for accelerated motion, we can solve for t here. And when we do, we get this, which look familiar now too. t is equal to the square root of 2y over g. And plugging in all of our numbers, where 0.1 meters is the distance fallen by this stream of water, um, we end up with 0.143 seconds. So it takes 0.143 seconds for water droplet to go from there to there. Um, so the only other part we need now is to find out what the speed the water is coming out of the bucket here horizontally. And to do that, that's why we need Bernoulli's equation. Before you've seen Bernoulli's equation as just one side of this equals to a constant. That's one way of saying it. Another way of saying it is that the um, atmospheric pressure plus the gauge pressure plus the pressure due to the movement of the uh, fluid uh, is uh, equal at uh, any location um, here. And so a before is equal to an after is another way of thinking. Or one location is equal to another location. So. We chose this location, our number one location, to be up here at the top of the uh, bucket. And this other location, at location two, to be down here where the water stream is pouring out. That being the case, since uh, our position is up here, 
our height at that location is equal to zero. There's no liquid above it. Well, other than the pressure, we'll get to that in a minute. So our gauge pressure, since the height is zero there, our gauge pressure is going to be equal to zero, and this term will drop out. Also, this fluid in the bucket doesn't move down very quickly. This is a small, assumed to be a small stream of water coming out, and so the speed of the water dropping down here the speed of the fluid at this location is going to be considered roughly equal to zero. So that being the case, this term in Bernoulli's uh, equation goes to zero and drops out. And then finally, uh, this is the next part to recognize, is the atmospheric pressure. This height difference isn't very much relative to the uh, um, thickness of the Earth's atmosphere, so the atmospheric pressure at the top up here pushing down is the same pressure as the pressure pressing trying to hold the fluid in the container over here and so these two pressures are equal and will cancel here and here what that means is this whole side of the equation is equal to zero uh, therefore our this whole equation drops down to this amount right here and when I move this term to the other side so I can solve for the speed here, I also recognize that the uh, density here will drop out from both sides. And then I can solve for V2 by multiplying both sides by 2 and then taking the square root of both sides. And when I do that, I get this somewhat familiar uh, term for speed. Um, and uh, when I do take the square root of 2 times 9.8 times the 0.3 meters from here to here for the height, I get 2.42 meters per second. That's the speed the fluid's coming out. So using that speed with the time that we've already calculated here and here, we finally can figure out that the distance that water stream will travel from here to here is 0.35 meters. Woo! So now you've seen how Bernoulli's equation is used, at least in one case, and there are other applications as well, and I encourage you to look on YouTube and the internet for other uh, models or examples to help you uh, when you're solving these equations on your own. And there you go. Good luck on your quest for continuous improvement.